I think that honestly what got us through it was even aside from emergency funds was already living within our means and making sure that we weren't so overextended that we needed every bit of both of our paychecks. What is the perfect bite? That mix of flavors, textures, colors, and aromas that come together in one amazing amuse-bouge. Big ideas expressed in small bites. That's our podcast, a variety of inspiring topics to make your financial goals and dreams a reality. Brought to you by Clark County Credit Union for your weekly serving of food reviews, financial education, and life hacks that your future self will appreciate. It's the perfect bite of interesting information to start your week. Welcome to The Perfect Bites, episode 84. I'm Crystal Price. And I'm Shannon Hiller. Let's dig in. We love trying new dishes here at The Perfect Bite, and Old School Pizzeria is offering classic and innovative pizza options. Next, we'll talk about what to do when a significant other loses a job or gets laid off. And finally, we'll share some in-demand side hustles. So each week on The Perfect Bite, we'll visit a locally owned Southern Nevada restaurant that we hope you will try and will become your new favorite too. This week, we're sharing one of my husband's favorites, Old School Pizzeria. They have three locations, Lake Mead in the 95, Blue Diamond in Buffalo, and the location I went to, which is on East Craig Road, directly across from the Cannery Casino. It is a really small restaurant, only about eight to nine tables, so a lot of people were getting their food to go. Have you ever been there to one of those locations? I have not, but I've seen it multiple times, and every time I'm like, oh, I'm going to go there Mm -hmm. next time, and I have not yet. Yeah, we have friends that like every time they have a party, they get old school pizzeria. It's just like their favorite place to go. And so, yeah, the to-go the to-go business was strong while we were there <laughs> because there is, it's very limited seating. So at Old School Pizzeria, they really focus on the quality of their pizza dough, which is a sourdough. And so it's just really full of flavor. It's actually easier to digest and it's crafted for over five days before Yikes. they use the dough. That's pretty cool. And the starter is more than 300 years old and from Italy. What? So really authentic. Yeah. So it's a lot of, when you go in, you see a lot of the um, signs it's like chalkboard signs everywhere and they mm. write out the menu it looks really cute but there's lots of information about about their dough so they really focus on that which I do think makes the pizza right if the yeah. crust isn't good you really don't like the pizza I have to go yeah it's delish so when we went we got the garlic rosemary bread knots with marinara sauce and a small chef's creation pizza called the apricot it's an apricot jam instead of like a sauce the jam is on the crust, okay, and then applewood smoked bacon, goat cheese, pine nuts, and arugula. So this is like kind of a fancy, fancy pizza, right? But they yeah. also had a ton of other options. So, but this one, it's a small. It was twenty four dollars. My husband treated me to lunch th- that day, and it feeds two to four people. So it was a large pizza, okay. but. The cost of the larger pizzas did catch my eye because, like, the large apricot was $62. Oh, my gosh. And some of the larges went up to $79. Oh. So this is not your... Um, well, this is not, like, quick in and out. Sausage. Yes. This is, like, some gourmet artisanal <laughs> yes, stuff. Yes, exactly. So it, very quality. Uh, they had very high-quality meats as well. Just lots of good options. That Things you don't really see. Like, I don't usually see pine nuts, you know, at your, at your uh, chain... No, pizza place or as toppings apricot jam yeah um. <laughs> so you can also build your own pizza and they do have the classics like pepperoni peppers ham and pineapple but they also had some really cool other ingredients braised pork um whole roasted cloves of garlic wild broccoli <laughs> uh house-made sausage and prosciutto so it was like anything if you want to just go basic pepperoni and cheese you could do that someone next to me had Kalamata olives with, um, I think maybe it was like some kind of a spinach or, or mm. other green on top. It looked almost like a Greek salad on this a pizza. This really good. And if you're not using, I think, traditional dough, you're using the sourdough, it's like a gourmet meal. Mm-hmm. Now I really need to go. Yeah, it was really good. The people, I was nosy. I'm like, what did you guys order <laughs> next to us? Because they had um, a pretty big size plate. It was it was two guys there eating. What they got was called the Monster Slice of Pizza. It was only eight ninety nine, and it came with a garlic knot or a garden salad. Or you could upgrade that to another type of salad, chicken wings, or even just add one more slice for only $1.50. Oh, that's great. And they I were huge. Fit that into my budget. Right, exactly. So for like $10, you get two slices. I would definitely get that next time. I wasn't sure like... They said they could order whatever pizza they wanted, though. So it's almost like they have, like, a base, and then they you can pick oh. what you want, and they put it in their, okay. their pizza oven. 
Um, so that's kind of what I saw most people grabbing for lunch. I think I would do that, do that next time. Maybe add one of the salads that they looked really good. So very busy, very popular. You can tell that it was a, a well-loved little location. If you have a recommendation for a restaurant or dish for us to try, send us a message at theperfectbite at ccculb.com. We are always open to new ideas. When you or your significant other loses a job, planning for your future life can be a major source of stress, but there are ways to mitigate the damage while you look for a new job. Crystal, you tell us about that. When your significant other loses a job, aside from making cuts in different areas of your finances, it's also important to take budgeting seriously to ensure that you're still covering your basic essential needs like housing, food, health care, and other bills. So we're going to talk about some of the areas that you can check out to hopefully be a little bit more proactive if something like this happens. So the first thing is your emergency funds. This is, of course, before anything happens. During a period when someone loses their income, there is no regular income. So you basically, you want to try to save up at least three to six months worth of essential living expenses to get you through while you look for a new job. Three to six months is a good time to get those resumes out, interview, things like that. So can I jump in here really quick? This yeah. has happened to me and my husband. He was laid off um, from a job that was very competitive and very much like cutthroat. If you mm. weren't at the top every month, they had layoffs. And so he he was laid off unexpectedly. And I think that honestly what got us through it was, even aside from emergency funds, was already living within our means yeah. and making sure that we weren't so Extended, overextended that yeah. we needed every bit of both of our paychecks. Mm-hmm. And so when it happened, of course, you know, we weren't happy about it, but we could look at our finances and say, okay, like the basics could be covered. Mm-hmm. And then also having some of that savings. We didn't have a lot of the time. Six six months is a lot to, to have. Yeah. That's always the goal. But I think that looking at your, your money now and saying like, what if... Yeah. What if I didn't have both of these incomes mm-hmm. is really good exercise to do and just kind of wakes you up a little bit about how much you might be spending because that is really scary. It's not something you want to have happen, but if it, it's probably likely at some point someone yeah, will think, need to get a new you know, job. In the, the situation of being laid off, a lot of times you have no idea. It's just one day, oh, surprise, we're laying yep. off. Um, I've, I've had that happen to myself as well. And yeah, came to work one day, all of a sudden the big bosses were coming in and they shut down our whole branch. And wow. it was like, well, what next? Not Clark County Credit Union. Not but- <laughs> Clark County Credit Union. Yeah, this is years, years ago. This credit union is no longer in existence. Yeah. They but- sent an email. Ugh. and uh, accidentally copied the entire West Coast. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So all around, it was not a good experience, but yeah. it was it was unexpected. It was it was scary, but we were we were OK. We were had to tighten our belts there a little bit. But yeah, that's good sense, mm-hmm. though, to like you said, don't overextend yourself, live within your means. Because, yeah, you just never know what may happen. And it could even not even be job loss. It could be your car completely breaks down Mm -hmm. and you need a whole new car, no repairing it. So, yes, be a little bit proactive and uh, watch your funds. Um, Another thing that you need to or you should look into if you do find yourself with a loss of job or being laid off is collecting unemployment. So unemployment insurance is a great way to help you get by if you're in a rough spot financially while you're looking for a new job. If you're approved for the unemployment insurance, usually it lasts for 26 weeks, but they do offer extensions. We saw a lot of people were laid off um, through the pandemic and things like that. Mm-hmm. And so the I'm assuming the government made exceptions to make extensions for that. So check into those things. Also, check with your local unemployment agency offer or office through their website. Remember that the rules and the amount of your income you are eligible uh, will vary state to state. So check that out first. Next thing is negotiating a severance if you're able. If your work is under a contract, if your employer offers a severance pay, talk to your company's HR department and discuss their policies and procedures. Make sure you understand everything that's involved with the whole process. Some companies base their severance pay on years of service, offering one week of pay for each year of work, while others provide a flat four weeks of pay. When I was laid off, I was fortunate that it was years of service and I had a good amount of years under my belt. So that kind of helped. 
I didn't experience a time where I was unemployed um, because it wasn't like, oh, you're laid off. We never want to see you again. It was like, you're laid off, but it's happening in a couple of weeks. So mm-hmm. I was able to find employment elsewhere, fortunately. But yeah, check those things out um, because years of service and a flat four weeks can be a huge difference. And then uh, finally, stay insured. So this is like medical insurance. Cobra Health Insurance is a lifeline for people who have lost their jobs. It allows them to continue their existing health insurance plan, although they will be responsible for paying the full premium. Cobra can be expensive, but it's important for those with pre-existing conditions. You may have 60 days to elect coverage after a job loss. Um, This is another one that I had to take in. I didn't... I changed jobs and it was actually right before coming to Clark County Credit Mm -hmm. Union. I was changing jobs and in that time I was having some issues with my kidney. I had to have a kidney removal Mm -hmm. and I was like, well, I I still need this gone. Like it's like an urgent thing, Um, but I was losing my my health insurance and so I got COBRA and I was able to get my um, surgery completed. I did have to pay that premium, but it was definitely worth it. For, for my health yeah <laughs> and so if you have kids if you um you yourself have pre-existing things your spouse whatever it is check those out uh, make sure you're covered because you never know what will happen um, it can go a long way now we're going to hear a few words from our sponsor clark county credit union members have received more than 73 million dollars in bonus dividends since 2001 just for using the credit union services they need every day since cccu is owned by our account holders they earn the dividend not shareholders this year we returned a 2.6 million dollar bonus dividend to members with auto loans credit cards and checking accounts open an account today and start earning your own bonus dividend funds privately insured by American Share Insurance. All right, next up is our Future Self segment inspired by the Happiness Project. If you're looking for another stream of income, consider looking for a part-time job or a gig like you do for fun or have a natural aptitude for, and then look for a way to monetize that. So you've heard about like the gig economy or side hustles. That was a a podcast I used to listen to, Side Hustle School, just to Mm. see like what people are doing to make a little money on the side. So for example, if you're a dog lover, you can consider dog sitting. There's just like some work into something that you already like, yeah. basically. Like don't go so reinvent like some work. skill. <laughs> yeah, you should already have the skill or something that you're interested in. So one example of a side hustle is a house helper. Many people hire house helpers or personal assistants to assist them with running errands, like shopping, dropping off returns. Oh, I could use one of these. Um, even helping them with mowing their lawn, just getting stuff done that they need done getting their car washed because i'm a part of this group it's like a neighborhood um group it's called like centennial hills chatter shout out Mm -hmm. um but somebody posted on there that they were looking for somebody to help them with their errands like um dropping their kids off at school helping with the groceries and i'm like huh they somebody is gonna do this for you house helper so yeah Offering your services is easier with the help of sites like Nextdoor, local community groups on Facebook, and you kind of see an average pay of $15 to $30 per hour. So if you have time during the day, you can help other people get their stuff done. That would be good. Uh, The next one is an AI specialist. Since the launch of ChatGPT in 2022, the demand for AI specialists has increased. I can't think of anything that's grown faster. I can't believe that's only been 2022. Grown, grown, grown. Um, Kathy Kristoff, founder and editor of SideHustle.com, mentioned that finding a niche that you're comfortable with and figuring out what's most appropriate for you in freelance sites like Upwork or Fiverr is very important. I've used Fiverr myself to to buy services. Um, Everything it started off, it had to be $5. Mm. You have to offer something at least it's $5. But most of them have like an add-on like graphic design services or, oh, cool. or development, stuff like that. Lots of cool things on there. Uh, we got like, a t-shirt design made a long time ago. So gig workers can see on average 50 to 150 an hour, depending on your specialty and level of expertise. There are usually fees when you get hired on those freelance sites, but maybe it'll start you off for finding new clients and just get you get you started. Uh, The next idea is being a tour guide. According to the World Tourism Organization, tourism has recovered 87% of pre-pandemic levels from January through September 2023, and there's a need for a tour guide. So do you know your hometown or local city really well? Maybe you can start offering a tour. Like, huh, what tour would I offer? 
the Coles and Target uh, <laughs> tour. Of... <laughs> what are you looking for? Yeah, Bath and Beauty. <laughs> Head this way. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's Sephora now. Did you know that? Let me let me guide you over here. Uh, but for example, a craft beer tour of Denver, Colorado, starts at fifty eight dollars. A tour of Tucson, Arizona, four hundred and forty five dollars for up to four people. Both of these included fees for guides, and you can consider like your cost for that type of tour you're offering, like gas for driving or food for walking. But yeah, we went to Seattle. There was someone you could buy a, a Seattle walking tour. You can go oh. down to the, you know, all the cool like street foods that you want to get, and they take you to the best places and they show you that. where to go. So yeah, if you love doing that kind of stuff, consider offering a tour. And the last one, athletic instructor for seniors. As people retire, they require more physical activities in their routine. This could be something like pickleball, tennis, or golf. These are like super popular right now. And sites like teachme.com offer people of all age groups lessons. Uh, one pickleball instructor on the site charges 141. Why 141? Per hour. <laughs> so yeah, 141. So what do you already know how to do? And think about what could be your side hustle to earn an, an additional income stream. It would be... Uh, great thing to do to build up that, you know, emergency fund. If you're looking at trying to put away savings and you don't really have it from your household income, earning more money is also an option as well as spending less. So look into different side hustles. There might be an opportunity there for you to add some income. We want to hear from you. Send us your financial questions or money topics that you'd like to learn more about. And don't forget any fun local food recommendations. Our email is theperfectbite at ccculv.com. Thank you for listening to this week's episode brought to you by Clark County Credit Union. For additional money management tips and financial calculators, check out our website at ccculv.org. Now that was the perfect bite.